morning my friends. I hope you're doing well wherever you are in the world today. I'm walking through this absolutely beautiful woodland that is absolutely flourishing with life. Spring is in full bloom, the birds are singing and there's bees buzzing around everywhere. It truly is a beautiful time just to be alive and spend some time out in the great outdoors. So today I thought we'd celebrate an extra special plant that's close to my heart, the broadleaf dock leaf. The broadleaf dock, otherwise known as bitter dock or red veined dock, but its scientific name is, you ready for it, Rumex obtusifolius. <laughs> <laughs> Rumex obtusifolius is this leaf's scientific name. Now, it's an incredible plant and you'll find it growing throughout the world. It's native to Europe, but you'll find it growing as far away as the USA too. And there's more than 50 species of this plant. But you'll find most commonly two types growing, and that's the broadleafed dock and the yellow dock. Now, the broadleaf dock kind of lives in the shadow of its brother, the yellow dock, because in all the books of foraging for edible weeds and herbal remedies, the broadleaf dock barely ever gets a mention. So today, it's the broadleaf dock time to shine, and I thought we'd celebrate everything to do with this magnificent plant. Now, the broadleaf dock is awesome because it's 100% edible. You can eat the leaves, the seeds, the stems, and even the roots. But I wouldn't advise eating the roots because they have a strong laxative effect. Now, the broadleaf dock is super rich in potassium, magnesium, and iron. And it's absolutely delicious if you use it correctly in a soup or in a salad. But the dock, the broadleaf dock, can live up to its nickname the bitter dock too because a lot of the leaves can be quite bitter so to find a fresh one rather than just grabbing a fresh leaf off the top you go down follow down the stem of a leaf that you think might be nice and pull it out at the very bottom of the stem now the slimier the bottom of the stem the better now this one's super slimy so i know this would be nice chopped up and put in a soup Now to identify the broadleaf dock is pretty simple. The leaves can grow up to about 30 inches in size. They're huge. They remind me of something out of Jurassic Park. Then you have this stem that runs right up the middle of the leaf. And most of the time, this has a tinge of red to it. Now this really helps me find out if it's broadleaf dock or not. And then off the stem, you'll see all the veins kind of wave out in a majestic pattern from the stem that runs up the center of the leaf. The leaf is a big oval shape, kind of like a spear tip. And if you look at the edges, sometimes they can be slightly wavy. And you also find that the stem has a light groove running down it, kind of like celery. By early summer, the dock produces these long flowery stems that are a reddish brown color. And these produce all the seeds of the dock. Thousands of seeds, in fact. A mature broadleaf dock plant can produce up to 60,000 seeds a year. How crazy is that? And these seeds all fall onto the ground and blow around and they can survive in the soil for over 50 years. Mind blown. The really cool thing about these seeds is you can collect them up quite easily. These are all remnants from the past. Put all the seeds into a, a blender, blend them up and it creates flour. And you can bake things like bread and things like that from the dock seed flour. Now, a thing I find amazing about the broadleaf dock is its ability to survive. It never gives up. If you come along with a lawnmower and desecrate this plant, it will simply rise again from the roots like a phoenix rising from the ashes. And the dock, the broadleaf dock, can actually survive completely submerged underwater for eight weeks at a time. How crazy is that? So I guess that's why it's been labelled, given that dreaded label, a weed. 
But we all know there's no such thing as a weed. A weed is just a flower growing where someone doesn't want it to. Because just like all plants in this world, the dock plays its own special role. The dock plant, not only is it a valuable food source for wildlife, has an extremely long root. It's called a tap root and it goes deep beyond where most plants normally go. And it draws up all the nutrients and all the minerals from deep underground that would normally just get left there. It draws them up, uses it as its life source, and then when it dies and drops to the ground, all these nutrients go back to the earth and feed all the plants around it. These nutrients never would have come up without the help of the dock. We all know the dock and we all love the dock with all our heart because of its one special ability and that's the ability to soothe nettle stings. To use a dock to soothe nettle stings, many people think that you take the leaf and simply rub it on the sting and that is slightly soothing or spit on it and stick that in the sting too. Now, making that scene about the flower stems, I actually did get stung <laughs> a lot. But if we just take this sting nettle here, for example, say, and sting this fine specimen of a leg that you see before you, that causes reaction from the from the the, the needles of the sting nettle. They kind of hang like a hypothermic syringe and get you and sting you. Now, instead of using just the leaf, the best thing to do is go all the way down the stem and it's all the slimy, gooey dock goodness within the stem that you actually want to rub on your stings. Now, you'll find that instantly it's like cooling and soothing. Now, I've read contradictory scientific things all about the dock and I stand by the dock. And I believe in the power of the dock because my lovely Stella took the powers of the dock one step further because me and her and the kids were always out running through the wild like, <laughs> like feral people. She created her own dock balm where she collects all the stems of the docks and simmers them within a coconut oil and this all bonds together and sets. Now we bring that out with us and whenever we get stung we just get this balm out that off of our pocket. I like to call it Sting and Nettle Kryptonite because it's green and you rub that on. And now for my favourite part of the video, the mythology and folklore that surrounds the broad-leafed duck plant. Now this plant has some really fun and interesting folklore because they used to believe that if you dug up the root of the duck, the broad-leafed duck, and then carved it and dressed it into the shape of someone that you admired <laughs> then you put it in your pocket and walked around with this little dock root doll in your pocket for a whole month right <laughs> then after one month you come home you boil that root you chop it up and boil it and you wash your whole body in this now boiled root water then you'll go out and the person that you wanted to woo will come along Oh, and absolutely fall in love with you because you've done the power of the dock crew. <laughs> That's very interesting and peculiar. I can imagine people walking around with these little carved mannequins of the people that they hoped fall in love with them. But then, just like throughout history, materialism and financial gain somehow fell into that folklore category because people thought, you know what, shopkeepers thought, I'm going to do that, but instead of thinking about the loved one, I'm going to think about money. And it became a tradition to do a similar thing, but then shopkeepers would wash their door handles in the water after, in the hope that it would bring a lot more financial gain to their shop. <laughs> I love folklore, it's incredible. I love these little stories. If you know any doc folklore, then I'd love to hear it in the comments, but that's personally my favorite. Anyway, guys, it's been a pleasure. The dock isn't a weed, it's a beautiful plant that draws up goodness and gives it to others. And I love and respect it for that. And it's, there's probably not a plant in the world that's soothed more child's tears than the dock plant. It's a great metaphor to be had with the dock. Be strong, be resilient, but never hesitate to stop and help someone along the way. Anyways, I'll see you all next time. Peace. Mm -hmm.
Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and ring that bell so you get notifications whenever we upload a video. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're interested in supporting our channel further so we can keep this content being created for free, then check out our Patreon. All the links for everything we just said is in the descriptions below. Peace.